go ahead and, and just talk about what specifically about your packaging because it is unique yeah. to what a lot of other food yeah. brands for backpacking are doing. Well, first, first of all, too, you know, besides besides the packaging and besides the brand, I think I think one thing that everybody needs to have or consider having is an eleventh essential. So bringing bringing a bag with them. And I mean, frankly, like Holly and I talk all the time, if you see it, it's your responsibility now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the person that left it, they're gone, right? And, and there's nothing you can do about that. You know, we can try and educate the public. We can try and make these things more socially acceptable or frowned upon. Um, but at the end of the day, man, you're out there using that land and you see it. Now the buck stops with you. Yeah. So I think everybody having a, a, a bag or some sort of preparedness to pick up whatever's left there is super important, right? Yeah. And, you know, you're, you're that what you just said there is I agree 100 percent on because. I see often where people go out and they'll see trash and they'll just walk by it. But these are the same people that would probably get on social media and talk about how we need more education. Well, right. OK. Yes, we need to educate, but you just missed out on an opportunity to pick it up yourself. Right. Um, right. I always carry some sort of a bag in my pack. Um, I always carry a large garbage bag just for emergencies for, for what might come up. There's many uses for a large garbage bag. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, I mean, it's not that difficult. We all go shopping for groceries at Walmart or wherever, and we got all these recycled plastic bags that we use in our garbage waste cans at home, you know what, just stuff yeah. one in your backpack. And if you see something, yeah. instead of looking at it and go, oh man, you know, one of the things that drives me nuts, and I don't know, you, you've probably seen this plenty of times, is I'll get on Instagram and somebody will take a picture of trash and then they'll put up a post of that trash and complain about it. Right, right, right. Well, you know, you just had missed an opportunity to pick it up and clean it. That's yeah. why I, I love what, and, and you know, you know Jenny the Trailhead, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. She's doing awesome stuff right now. Exactly. I mean, she'll take pictures of trash, but she's also showing video or pictures of her picking it up. You know? Right, right. That's I mean, that's part of her Illinois project that she's got going on. But see, that's what I'm what you're saying is there there's we, people can't have that attitude that hey, you know, somebody threw trash, I'll look at that. How can these people be so dirty and nasty right. and just walk from it? Well, you know, right. You can do your part too and just pick it up. You're right. The 11th, 11th central is, I think, very important as yeah, far as all this getting out. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, you know, back to, you know, the product that, that we have, the, the packaging, Sasquatch Fuels packaging, that this whole company stemmed from that idea back in like 2012. Um, it, my dad and I, just like I was saying, we do all of our backcountry trips and alpine fly fish. I can't tell you how many how many mylar packages that we ran across and everything else, right? Um, I was just sick of seeing it and figured, well, why can't there be this packaging that could, you know, degrade or break down if it was left behind and never found? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because you got to figure, especially like over here in Montana, you get up to like 9,000, 10,000 feet in elevation. There's not very many people out there to pick up after you, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, nonprofit organizations have a hard time pushing their volunteers that high and that far. And frankly, you know, rangers just don't have the resources. I mean, mm -hmm. we ran into a ranger a couple of years ago on West Rosebud in the, in the Beartooth Absarokas. He was down at Mystic Lake, and we were head up to Granite Peak, and we were talking to him. And hey, are you going? Are you going up at all? Are you going to be up at Huckleberry or you know uh, Princess Lake or anything like that? And he's just laughed and he said, "No, unfortunately, it's just me for this whole entire drainage system. It's just me, and I can't get anywhere past this first lake because it's always you know it's always littered with stuff and." Yeah. And uh, that's a lot of ground for one person. To, that's a lot of ground for one person to cover. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the whole idea was, you know, my dad and I be out there alpine fly fishing. We'd see this stuff. We'd always pick it up. And it just was like, well, man, there's got to be more stuff that's floating out there that we don't see. 
Um, so what if we could just help cut down on that or combat that litter in the back country with a, with a package that would basically eat itself? Um, you know, we don't endorse litter by any means, but you know, it, it'd be naive to think that it doesn't get away from us. I mean, we can't, we can't grab everything out there. Right. Um, and, and above all too is, is landfills. So all of our packaging going to the landfill or oceanic environments, you know, what's a way that we can help cut down on that. And so, you know, at that point in time, there was, you know, just a couple of brands out there that had been around for decades and, you know, I just, I just started calling anybody and everybody I could in the packaging industry and saying, Hey, like, is this, is this a viable option? Is there a packaging that is, you know, compostable or biodegradable at the time? And, and a lot of people laugh at me. A lot of people <laughs> are like, imagine, you know, yeah. that's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, I, I, I looked into this, this packaging, uh, that, that says it's compostable. Um, and it's, it's usually made of polylactic acid, which mm. is corn based. Um, and that stuff is good. It, it makes you feel good. Um, but the, the science and the data behind it and the energy, the jewels that go into the packaging being made, there's actually more of a carbon footprint in that packaging than a regular petroleum based package. Mm. And on top of it, you know, it's not going to degrade if it's just laying on the ground or if it's just laying in the water, it has to have a specific amount of days in a specific environment. Um, and so, you know, it just hadn't been done. And after about two years of just hunting down and talking to every person that I could in the industry, I finally found a company that was doing coffee bags with this material that was omnigradable. And so basically this material would break down wherever microbes were present. Mm -hmm. and that includes like lakes, rivers, soil, landfills, ocean, even land. I said landfill, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I, I say it so much, it just becomes yeah, like a. Yeah, no, exactly. I hate it. Uh, but anyway, so we knew that this was out there. We saw the scientific data behind it. They had university studies, they had independent lab research. Uh, we bought the packaging from them, tested it out on our own. And finally was like, okay, this is the real deal. Uh, but can it contain boiling water? Can we use it for meals? Cause mm -hmm. it was just being used for coffee. So we worked with the, the owner of the, of the manufacturing facility to come up with these packages with, with zero toxicity when added with boiling water or mm -hmm. food product to get them for, for backpacking meals. And, uh, yeah, so you know, it's that was about in 2015. It took two years to find the packaging, and then you know, a couple of years there to to figure out how to make all these meals work with the packaging and everything. So I don't know, man. I, I think that I think it's important. You mm -hmm. know, you start yeah. seeing other brands come out, and they're 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 thinking about their packaging. The consumers want the packaging, and I think that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, you know. Yeah. The thing is, like you talked about how it, it pretty much started in your mind and the idea in 2012 with you and your dad and then, you know, up to 2015. I mean, we're talking just, you know, two, three years of really working hard yeah. to develop we're, what you knew in your mind. and Working like a madman and, and, and nobody really saw the vision other than my dad and I. You know, and you're trying to tell your friends and other people about this. And everyone's like, oh, that's cool. But no one ever thinks that you're actually going to do it until yeah. you do it. Right? Yeah. But see, the hard and, work, uh, though, the, the hard work has definitely paid off because, yeah, I mean, what you guys are doing now, I mean, you're part of the 2%. Um, you're giving back to the Arizona Trail, um, the, the packaging itself, even how you yeah. even how you make the, the, the food that goes in your packaging, you're, you know. You're not freeze yeah. dried foods and it's high quality meals. I mean, I, I know I, I've eaten them and <laughs> they're great. You know, which one's my favorite. Um, yeah. And, and, but I mean, that's the thing, hard work, you know, you have to put in that hard work to, to for it to pay off and, yeah. and to be truly and honestly to be truly grateful. Yeah. I mean, this, this, this company has been literally my life for the last you know, eight years, even before we started. Right. And, you know, 
when you truly when you have to truly build something from the ground up that had never been done before uh no outside money no real money of your own to do it and just having to start at real humble beginnings with the belief in what you're doing it's 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 hard to comprehend to explain you know it's and with that like our roots right our roots are alpine fly fishing using public land and we were sick of seeing backcountry litter and so at the end of the day it's like we're not going to stray from that man yeah. i mean we, we partner with the arizona trail because we truly believe in what the azta is doing mm-hmm. 800 miles of through hiking trail through utah to mexico it, it takes a lot of work to ma- maintain and manage that trail yeah you know and it took a a load of work that I can't even comprehend to make that trail happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so, so for us, 2% for conservation where, you know, we, we donate at least 1% of our, our, our revenue and 1% of our time to volunteering. I really like that idea because you actually have to get out and volunteer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's more than put the money where your mouth is. It's like, go out, get sweaty, do hard work, yep. and get it done. Yeah. Show your appreciation. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're all about. And I mean, we'll never change from that because that's where this whole thing started. You know?